And we're back with another Pico CTF challenge, this time Trivial Flag Protocol, a forensics challenge. And it says, figure out how they move the flag. And then we have a PCAP we can download. It's actually pretty big, it's about 50 megabytes, so I've already downloaded that. And then the hint is, what are some other ways to hide data? So let's go ahead and let's open this up in Wireshark and let's take a look at the capture. And as always, I like to get a sense of exactly what I'm looking at by looking at the statistics. So we have about two minutes of traffic, 150,000 packets, so uh, quite a bit more than we're used to, and about 47 megabytes of transfer. Let's also look at the conversations we have. So we've got two IPv4 conversations, and then we have a bunch of UDP conversations that are occurring. And then finally, let's look at our protocol hierarchy. And this looks pretty straightforward. We've got a bunch of IPv4, UDP, that is Trivial File Transfer Protocol. So the name of this challenge was a playoff of this, Trivial Flag, Trivial File. And we can see we're transferring a bunch of data. We could look through the streams. For example, let's do UDP stream equals zero. And we could follow the streams. Oops, sorry about that. And we would see there's an instruction.txt.octet coming through. And we could take a look at all these. But we know this is going to be binary across the wire because it's sending files largely. And that's very difficult to read in this format. I, I'm going to say it's actually, it's pretty much impossible. So you can make out some things like this looks like a, a Debian binary, but really we would like to actually extract the files that are being sent. Uh, it looks like we have a picture too. And then this is probably picture bytes that are coming across. Fortunately, Wireshark gives us a really easy way to do this. If we go under file export objects, you can see we have different uh, protocols that can send files. So like HTTP can send files, SMB, TFTP, Trivial File Transfer Protocol, can also do that. And here we can see we've got six different files that are available. So we are going to save all of those and I'm going to save them on the desktop. I'm going to create a new folder, TFTP files. I'm going to choose that. And we will save them all. I guess it already did that. Let's check and see if it did pull those files out. And perfect. So what we can see is we have six files. We have an instructions, which doesn't make a lot of sense upon first looking at it, but we'll come back to this. We have plan which kind of looks similar to the instructions. So maybe they're encoded or encrypted in the same way. And then we have three file or three pictures. It seems pictures of valleys. And then last we have this program.deb. So this is a Debian. Debian is a flavor of Linux, a Debian package. And if we open it, so the way the, the packaging system works is think about how Windows has installers and you double click and you install something. Uh, Linux has a similar idea, but these are basically just zip files. And if we click in, what we can see is we can see a description of what we have here and it is steghide. So steganography, steganography is, uh, Actually, it probably tells it right here. Hide bits of a data file in the least significant bits of another file in such a way that the existence of the data file is not visible and cannot be proven. So that's a, a long way of saying if you have a picture like this of this valley, you could use the, the least significant bits of this green color, for example, and you could store something in that. And people would still look at the file and it would look green. It wouldn't be the perfect shade of green but it would be close enough. So that's what's likely happened here, just given the fact that we have this steg hide right here. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to figure out these instructions and this plan.txt. And whenever you're looking at something 
like this, something that, that is just a, a garbled mess, the first thing I, I try to do is I try to look at what characters are being used because that, that'll tell you a lot about what encryption you're potentially dealing with or, or how they scrambled things. All I see are alphabet characters in here. I don't see anything else. Well, there's a, a period, but I, I think that's just a break. And then I just see alphabet characters here too. So this might be some kind of substitution. And so let's take this over to CyberChef and we will try different substitution schemes. So let's start with instructions. We'll bring this over, put this as our input, and then we'll try rotations to start. So this is a simple Caesar cipher, which just rotates things by 13. We're gonna drag that in and we will just kind of go up and down and look at the output change and see if anything makes sense. And what we can see is, it's a little bit hard, a little bit hard to notice, but this actually looks like it worked. The original rotation of 13 looks like it worked. And we have a message, TFTP doesn't encrypt our traffic. Actually, I'm gonna bring this out. This is such a pain to read. And it would have been so much nicer if they had put spaces in. So TFTP doesn't encrypt our traffic. So we must disguise our flag transfer, figure out a way to hide the flag, and I will check back for the plan. All right, and then if we look at the plan, let's see if we can also decrypt that by using ROT13, and we can. I used the program hid it with due diligence, check out the photos. All right, so I, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't get this one initially. I kind of think this is lazy, but this is the password. Due diligence is the password, and we know we're using steg hide. So if we start going through these different files, uh, steg hide, sorry, maybe I didn't explain enough about steg hide, but it is the program that we have right over here that was bundled with all this, and it's a way to hide images, uh, hide data in images. So if we wanted to extract, well, if we didn't know how to use Steg Hide at all, we could bring up the man page for Steg Hide, and we could go through and we could see we probably want to extract the secret data from the Stego file. We want to specify. Stego file, there we go. The embed file is if you want to do embed something in it, whereas the Stego file, that's what you're going to embed into. So we want to extract from the Stego file. And I think that will do it for us. So let's try that. Let's first make sure I have due diligence in my clipboard, and I do. We will say steg hide minus stego file, and we'll start with the first. Oops, I forgot to extract. Sorry, I think it's extract. And there's a passphrase. We'll try due diligence. Couldn't extract anything. Let's try the next one. Paste clipboard. Couldn't extract anything. Try the last one. Could not open the file flag.txt. All right, so that seems promising. Let's list the directories. Uh, could not open the file flag.txt. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. I'm going to try extract file to specify what we want to save this as. And I'm going to say flag.txt. And then I'm going to try again. So this is encouraging, but it's kind of a weird error. I'm not sure what's going on yet. 
why couldn't that extract it? Oh, maybe everything is root. So this may be a permissions issue. So I will run this as sudo. I'm gonna eliminate this. Ah, there we go. So just to explain what was going on, this directory, so when I do a, an ls minus lath, what you can see is this directory, which is denoted with dot, is owned by root. And I am currently just the user. Root is like, think of it like a super user or something like that, an administrator. So I wasn't able to write in this directory because I didn't have the proper permissions. So then when I use sudo, that stands for super user do, then I'll have the appropriate permissions. Now we can open up the flag and we can see Pico CTF hidden in plain sight. And it took it. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, you can help me out by liking, commenting, subscribing, etc. Thanks a lot. Bye.